Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike Larkin, one half of the Stephen Mike Show. StephenMikeShow.com is up and running. www.stephenmikeshow.com, where you get to hear the Golden Age Everything, the Stephen Mike Show, pop culture, and On the Mic with Mike, which I'm back with another On the Mic with Mike today. I am privileged, and I'm pl- it's a pleasure to have on the line uh, Kylie McDonald, the host of the New York Lottery, actor, just an overall awesome person and overall individual. So, Kylie, thank you so much for your time tonight. How are you? What's up? Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I, I'll be honest with you, I'm happy to have you. Because like I said, growing up, like, God rest her soul, my grandmother, as far as the New York lottery goes, man, we used to have that lottery on, and we used to go with her to the stationery store up uh, by us in New York there, and we used to play, like, the Take Fives and Mega Millions. And I gotta say, as growing up with uh, Yolanda Vega, and just you know, every time hearing yeah. her voice, and now looking to see what you're doing at, you know, with the New York Lottery as a host, I gotta say it's just it's a great evolution for that because, like I said, ABC has always been the station for me as far as you know lottery and just the news. So I gotta say to see you doing your thing there is absolutely awesome. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, we've got a great team there. That's my favorite part about it is getting to hear people's stories of you know, how it's a part of their, their childhood or their lives and, you know, just the, the little memories they have with it. Now, we're going to bounce around here because I have some notes i got to ask you, but one thing i got to mention because I think I saw it on your Twitter. Man, how do you react when you're doing the midday or even the night numbers and then you see 666 coming up right in the numbers? And, <laughs> and, and you got to be all the, making tonight's number 666, and then you're just like, oh, oh. i got to ask you about that. I know that happened to me. I think it was twice within two weeks. Oh like it was within a week or something. So it happened during the live. And I don't know, like I'm not the most superstitious person, but I'm, there's something in me that's like, oh, no, stay away, stay away. So <laughs> when that happened, of course, I was like staying in character. But inside, I was like, I I cannot do this. This is too much. It's, it's a little terrifying for me and I was like <laughs> the rest of the night I was just praying I'm like nothing else can go wrong it's gonna be good we got this so that's what we had to do but it's it's pretty funny well, and I gotta say, I'm just saying, and I'll be honest with you, like in 2010, I even remember, I was kind of superstitious about it, but as far as movies goes, do you remember uh, the 2010 film Devil? I don't know if you re- if recall that. Do you remember that movie? I think so. Pretty sure. I don't know if I saw it. Okay, but anyway. so the poster of it is, um, like, the elevator going down, so all these people are in um, in the elevator, right, and they've either done something wrong or they've sinned, but the caveat about it is one of those people in the elevator is the actual devil themselves, incarnate. Oh. So it's it's kind of interesting, but it, and it's spooky at the same time, so that's, like, the only movie, I'll be honest with you, I think the Exorcist are classic movies, but I'll be honest, that's not my thing. I, I That's not my thing, but I, I get it why people like it, but yeah, I'm kind of like you with the whole superstitious, a little bit thing, but I'm like, yeah, you gotta be in character talking about 666, and you know, oh, the, yeah. that's what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and you gotta be all hype about it, but I'm like, yeah, I, I, I just had to bring <laughs> that up, because I'm like, that's that's pretty interesting that you had to deal with that twice in one week, even. Yeah, it was a little bit of an act, but uh, I I pulled it off. <laughs> gotcha. Now, I got to ask you. I got to ask you, Kylie. Talk about, now we're going to talk about, just first and foremost, talk about getting into the entertainment industry. What is it about it that you want to get into and study as far as, you know, whether it be acting or just in general, overall, the entertainment industry? Yeah, well, I mean, I grew up doing a bunch of shows, a lot of musicals. I was a big dancer. So that was kind of my love, and it still is, obviously. And I think, you know, in high school, I was just like, you know what? This is what I want to do forever. And um, looking back, like, I think (laughs) that was, like, a little scary to just jump right in. But, you know, I knew that that was the field I wanted to go into. And I'm so happy that, you know, I, I was that confident, even though I really had no reason to be at that age. But, you know, I just went straight into it. So, um I went to Ryder University for acting, and there I really just, I think I found my, like, concrete vision, you know? I figured out that, you know, it's we're telling stories of people and people's lives and humanity, basically, and now we're all alike. And I think there's something so beautiful for anybody to see a story of another person who's not like them and to be able to relate to it and you know, realize that we're really all one, no matter our social, economic class, whatever you want to uh, relate it to, you know? So I think that's what I want to do. And no matter what uh, field of entertainment I'm in, that's my goal is to bring humanity together. And um, that's, you know, that's what I want to do. 
And I think that's an awesome message behind that as well. And I actually that was going to ask you about Ryder University. What is it about Ryder University that you know that really intrigued you about going there? Um, I think uh, looking back, it had a great location. Uh, it's close to New York City and Philadelphia, and their program, their their performing arts school, is really just incredible. Um, they have great faculty, and because of its location to the city, they're able to get a lot of Broadway performers and and entertainment um, professionals to come in and speak with us and talk to us and work with us. So I really had the opportunity to meet and connect with a lot of people while I was there, um, while really just getting to work with amazing faculty every day and grow as a performer and a person. Now I got to ask you, as far as Rider University goes, I believe you choreographed the Rider Dance Ensemble there as well. Can you tell, tell us about that experience? Yeah, I did. I was one of the choreographers um, for RDE, Rider Dance Ensemble, and that was just so fun. I really had a good group of friends through that organization, and choreographing is something that I really always loved because, you know, you just get to bring your creative side out, and that organization was really a great opportunity for me to do that there. I could do whatever kind of piece I wanted, whatever song, and really bring my vision um to life and I got to do it three years in a row and you know in college you're changing a lot you're going through a lot so that was a good creative outlet to get all my stress out in college which was needed <laughs> and I gotta ask you obviously you know we talk about Rider University and the acting and choreography like you did there I believe you also studied abroad right in England is that correct I did yeah I got to study in London for about uh four months and that was one of the most incredible experiences of my life hands down now, I was going to say this to you because it's amazing, you know, just to talk to great people like yourself and people that I've had the pleasure to interview in all different fields. Now, uh, I've interviewed professional wrestlers, and one of the big spots that they want to wrestle in is the UK, London, because, again, it's a hotbed for talent. And I got to say, you got to, the culture, it's great. And again, you get to, you know, put your feet into the international waters and just experience different cultures and experiences living abroad. So, again, that must have been great for you, and you got to learn, you got to adapt, and just, you know, apply your craft going forward. Absolutely, yeah, and that was my first time out of the country, so it was a learning experience all around, and um, yeah, I think I just had that mindset of, you know, I'm just going to explore and take every opportunity I can, and I did, and I got to travel a lot, and I got to, um, you know, see a lot of shows while I was there, too, and take some acting classes, and uh, take some acting classes at the Globe Theater, even, and it was really just incredible. Every day was a uh, I was facing the unknown, but it was a great adventure. Now, one thing I do have to ask you about that is, now, I believe, you got to talk about interning with that Capital Global Education, like you mentioned, I believe it was Media Trust and just experience. Talk about the differences, again, you're doing internships there and what you're doing with the New York Lottery and just hosting now and just doing internships are all different television stations. What would you say are like the similarities and differences to what we have, what they have there in the UK and what we have here in the States? Yeah, well, I loved interning at Media Trust. It was a non-for-profit uh, organization which helped media organizations and companies to uh, bring up their voice out. It helps, you know, charities to have a voice. And I worked with their channel, which I would basically say is like the PBS um, that we have here. Um, so we got, I basically ran their social media and got to bring all these stories, like I was saying before, of people who, you know, wanted to share their charity or whatever they were doing, you know, to give it a voice to the people. So that was really awesome. But it was really cool working in London because it is a little different. They had like rum Fridays in the office where everyone would end an hour early and we get to, you know, just drink casually and have a great time. Um, yeah, and I don't, it, I don't know. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. So I think it's much more relaxed there. Everyone's doing their work, but, you know, they take their holidays, and it's not a big deal, and we can all just, you know, they, get, they can relax and that, take a break if they need it, you know. So that's nice. And, you know, I feel like in the States it's just a little different. So it's a, it's been – it's cool to have worked in both places and to bring – my experiences from there here and uh, just continue to grow. 
Now, I have to ask you, because I'll go back to the States here. I mean, we talk, you know, abroad and, and right at university. I have to ask you, uh, talk about, like, I, like I said, I'm very happy to see what you're doing as far as being a New York Lottery host, spokesperson, whatever you want to call it. I love what you're doing on that front. How did that whole thing come into fruition? You know, it was something I never expected. So I graduated Ryder in May 2017 with acting, and my plan was kind of to save up over the summer. I was babysitting every day. You know what? I was living at home. I'm like, okay, in December or January, I'm going to move to the city and just start auditioning. And then I say halfway through the summer, I saw some of my friends were getting jobs and stuff, and I'm so happy for them. And I was just kind of, you know, babysitting and staying at home. And I was like, why am I not even trying right now? Like, why am I waiting? So I just started looking for stuff and doing some auditions here and there. And I actually found the lottery posting on Indeed.com randomly. I think I just searched like TV jobs in, in New York or whatever, something so general. And that came up and I was like, huh, like, I think I could definitely do that. So I applied and after a few, <laughs> a few interviews and a lot of waiting, I finally found out that I got it. And, uh, it was crazy exciting and, uh, just something I never expected. Well, I got to tell you, like I said, growing up with the likes of Yolanda Vega and now seeing you doing your thing, and I mean, it's going to be one of those things where you're just going to keep doing your thing with the lottery. And somebody, like I said, the news very popular with ABC and just overall because the midday numbers are there, the evening numbers are there. You're just, like I said, I love what you're doing. And like I said, you could even be, I like I said, you're, I know you're relatively new with it, but you could be the next Yolanda Vega even. Like I said, you got the whole, like Yolanda Vega has the Yolanda Vega and you got that whole, like, you know, pep about you. And like I said, you do great at what you do. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. And she's actually my boss. So uh, she's wonderful to work with and to hear how all her stories is really amazing. And she gives so much great advice. And um, yeah, it's just great to be a part of this legacy with me and uh, the other three hosts that we have now. So it's, it's awesome. That's what I got to say. I think I think that's what's great about everybody and what different fields that they get into. You have a great learning tree, and as long as you listen and you adapt and, you know, you keep your eyes and ears open, it's just going to make for an incredible future going forward. Absolutely. There's something to learn from everyone and everything around you, and you got to take, you know, got to take those opportunities to learn and grow. Exactly. Now, I have to ask you this as well. Man, I got to talk about Miss New York 2014. Talk about being in that and that um that whole deal oh my gosh yeah that was it's crazy it feels like so long ago now but um actually donald trump was the owner of the pageant back then and <laughs> it really wasn't that long ago but uh yeah um it was very cool i did it when i was a freshman in college and it was just something i was like you know entertainment i was like let's try this let's see how this goes taking the opportunity and i was really pleasantly surprised by the whole ordeal because um all the girls were so nice and so fun and you really just get to live your your supermodel dreams up there basically and have a lot of fun um one thing i remember which is kind of funny is the food they fed us like as the pageant weekend went on um it was so funny the first day before any competition i remember they literally just had like salad for everybody. <laughs> we were like, okay, let's eat this. And then the next day, maybe there was like a little meat, a little salad, you know, whatever. And then the final day after the competition was over, and you know, like I didn't win, but we found out, you know, we weren't the winners and we walked backstage and there was like Panera bread and Doritos and Twinkies and basically anything you could think of. And they were on our side during that moment. And they were like, you know what? <laughs> take all the food you want so I thought uh, I thought that was pretty funny now I have to ask you this and I'm just going to be point blank and blunt with this Donald Trump seeing okay. him, see Donald Trump doing his thing with the Miss USA and you know all these pageants and that was the word I was looking for before I'm not going to lie I had a brain fart there I didn't mean to say you know that deal but I meant to say pageant thank you for reiterating because that was the word I was looking for for some reason pageant oh, just okay. went out my my head but I but I dig, <laughs> but I digress I got to ask you seeing it from 2014 to where Donald Trump is now did you ever think that he would become the president of the United States of America of course not. Who did? <laughs> Nobody. And that was only like four years ago. I know, Are right? you kidding me? I don't know. 
insane that's what i'm saying because i talk to people about this and you know you look at you know you talk about the pageants like you were doing and just the overall experience which was great because i'll say this to you right now parents wise you're a beautiful young woman and again i wish you nothing but the best going forward and i'm happy you got to experience that what i'm just saying you look at the donald trump aspect you know businessman doing what he does trump towers etc etc and then you think man four years later president of the united states it's like what in the world it's it's in a way it's a mind-blowing feeling it's a mind-blowing experience Seriously. Yeah, I remember being backstage at that pageant and like we were talking like, oh, I wonder if like Donald Trump will be here. Like, that'd be so cool. And he wasn't. But it was just like, you know, he was like the business, the apprentice guy. Uh Like, that's what we knew him as. And that was it. And it's funny, too, because if you actually compare it as far as, like, present history, like you, like you mentioned, he's the apprentice guy. Donald Trump, everybody knows him as the apprentice, one of the highest rated shows in, in cable television. And if you look at the 80s, I mean, you look at Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was the president before Ronald Reagan was the president. He was an actor. Look at Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Terminator. I'll be back. It is not the Tuma. You know what I'm saying? And the films that he's had. <laughs> and he's the governor of California. And the, yeah. And even if you look at 1999, Governor of Minnesota, Jesse the Body Ventura, wrestler, announcer, and he, he's, the, he's, you know, he's the governor of Minnesota. So it really just shows you, again, anything can happen in the United States of America. It's true. It is. It's very true. <laughs> it is true. Now, a couple final questions I got to ask you, and I'm going to tell you right now, I really do appreciate your time today. And anytime you want to come back on, I'll be happy to have you. Oh, well, thank you. I'd be happy to come back. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Kylie. Now, uh, any advice that you would like to give to any guy or gal that wants to pursue a career like you in the entertainment industry, acting, whatever, do you have any advice for them? Yeah, um, I think it's something you hear a lot, but I don't think I really realized it until, you know, I, I grew up a little bit, but really stick to your own. Really don't be afraid to fall into a type, you know, like in an audition, don't think about being a certain stereotype or anything you want to be really just be yourself and really own it and be a real person in the audition room. Don't try to, you know, just be this fake, happy, bubbly girl. Just, you know, be, be, who you, and of course be friendly and all that, but you know, like be who you are and you will be recognized for that. And also create your own content. You, you know, you can go on an audition every day and you might not get any, for a period of time. But if you, we live in a world where where technology is so readily available to us, why not take your iPhone, create a little movie, and then just put it on out there and see what happens, you know? We have all these opportunities here for us, and you just gotta take them and just start building your your brand and your profile on your own, because that's how a lot of people are doing it these days. I got to say that's beautifully said, and I'll I'll actually say this to you, because this is with the utmost sincerity and respect to you, and this also ties into, you know, like building your brand and just everything like that. Uh, you know, people talk about the pros and cons of social media, and obviously, you know, the good, you get to connect with people, look at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the whole nine, and then, you know, people talk about the negatives, because everybody, because it's a good thing, it's a pro, everybody has a voice, but it's a bad thing that everybody has a voice, because it leads to stupid Twitter beefs and a lot of negativity being spewed, so obviously, and also that's in life, a lot of pros and cons and everything, but I gotta say this. Reaching out to you on Instagram and setting this up today is an absolute, it's a blessing and it's a pro because I get to meet and talk with great people like yourself and I got to think that's obviously one of the biggest pros about, you know, social media, getting interviews like this and just meeting and interacting with great people. So on that, I thank you so much. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. And same here for me. Like I never expected, I don't know where I was. I think I was at my friend's house just like chilling, eating some popcorn or whatever, and I got this message. I was like, hey, would you like to do an interview? I'm like, yes, absolutely. Like, this is, it's so cool how this happened, and it is thanks to social media. So, you know, you got to be careful of people out there for sure, but, you know, take use it to your advantage and uh, grow with it. Exactly. And and it's so funny. I'll give you one more story here. So, uh, with, with these shows, like I mentioned, I get to talk with great people in different fields. I actually interviewed Christy Knowings, who people may remember from all that. And it's so funny because I actually, like you with Instagram, that's how we set up an interview. And what's so funny about that is because she even said to me, he's like, imagine if this was 1997, 1998, you know, when all that was at its height on Nickelodeon, right? I would have to mm-hmm. go, you would have to go through their manager and this and that. And just one message on Instagram, boom, sets it up like that. So again, it just shows you how the internet and everything has evolved over the years. 
Absolutely. Yeah. It makes everything a little easier for us. Maybe a little too easy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I 100% agree with you on that. And uh, this is actually where I'll step back, Kylie, because please promote the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, the whole nine. Let everybody know what you can find and let everybody know what you're going on, what's going on with you and what you're up oh, Awesome. Yeah. Well, my Instagram is probably my main uh, form of contact for me. Uh, so that is at Kylie, K-Y-L-I-E. And then two E's on top of that, so three E's, um, McDonald's, um, and I have some little videos and comedy shorts coming out in a few weeks, so um, look forward to that, and I'll be posting some previews and then the eventual full video on there, um, and then my Twitter is at Kylie McDonald, just one E in that one, and then if you look at my Facebook page, it's at Kylie McDonald NY. And that is that, and I'm really easy to contact, and uh, yeah, I like to keep things fun on there, so why don't you just join me? (laughs) Awesome. I will put the links in that. I believe you have a YouTube channel as well. I'll put the YouTube channel in there as well. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. I should know these things, but yes. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Kylie McDonald. The only other thing I'll ask, because I'll be honest with you, what's great at the end where I have everybody promote the social media, some people do use it. I'm not one of them, but if you do, God bless you, do your thing. Uh, any Snapchat or anything like that? Because I know some people are on that form of social media as well, the Snapchat. Any Snapchats or is it just those main four that we mentioned? Um, I do have Snapchat, but I, I like to keep that private for okay. my, you know. All right. Got to keep the ugly faces for the people who are close to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the only but, reason um, why I'm asking because yeah. some people do promote that as well. So I just wanted to confirm with you on that. <laughs> well, thank you. But yeah, I'd be happy to respond to anything on any of the other forms. Perfect. I'll get this out for everybody. And uh, Kylie McDonald, any final words to your fans and any final words to the people? To the people? To you the know people. what? I don't know. Let's just, you know, we got to be a little kinder to one another. Let's just make each other smile every day. Give a compliment today. That's what I want you to do. Just give a compliment to somebody and see where it gets you. <laughs> <sighs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So beautiful final final words. And uh, guys, thank you so much for listening. I'll be back with more audios in the next coming days. Everyone have a great weekend, and God bless you, my friends. And Kylie, look forward to doing this again, and thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you so much, Mike, for having me. It was awesome. All right. So for Kylie McDonald, my name is Mike Larkin. Talk to you all soon. Peace.